Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Cosmic Regeneration Run, or Cosmic Run Regeneration, and it's for one to four players. It plays about 30 to 45 minutes, I'd say, and it's for ages about 12 and up. In the game Cosmic Run by another uh, Dr. Finn Games that made uh, the herbaceous and uh, the little flower shop, you're basically going to be playing as spaceships discovering planets. Now these planets are under attack or under siege by meteors, so you need to get to them before the meteors do. And if uh, too many meteors hit the planets, they blow up and you score based on how far you got to them. And you're trying to basically collect as many victory points as possible by traveling across the board, collecting planets or discovering planets, and uh, earning points on the board that are going to be randomly displaced along the board. And whenever a planet gets destroyed or found, you allocate those points. And after all the planets have been discovered, count up the points, uh, you can uh, then end the game and see who has the most points. There's another interesting thing too called tech cards in which you can go ahead and pick guys up. And what you do a little bit of a set collection thing that also allows you to utilize and change the way the die are moving. Speaking of die, you're going to be rolling dice and allocating them based on how you roll. It's going to play similar to a Yahtzee style mechanic in which you're trying to allocate die and roll them to get the, a lot of die that you need depending on the planets. Some planets are going to require five of a kind, others require only ones, and others will require all different types of dice, but I think you get the idea. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game, scoring planets, collecting as much points as you possibly can, and outmaneuvering other opponents. All right, let me go ahead and show you the game and explain a little bit how to play. So here we have the game by Oren Seamus and Dr. Steve Finn. Uh, this is everything included as well as the, uh, the basic single player cards. So let's go ahead and talk about everything. The first thing is box and of course rule book. Really well done and looks nice. Uh, nice and thick and very well colored. Uh, the entire board here along with each player's colors. There's four different player colors. You have blue, green, red, and yellow. Which you're going to be putting on each of these locations here. They're little spaceship locations. They all should indicate a negative amount of points because you do not want to end up at the end here uh, because you're going to lose points if you do. There is a yellow track here as well that takes you to this planet here, in which case, based on turn order, uh, if you are going first, you're going to go ahead and start at the very beginning here, and uh, if you're going last, you're going to start at the uh, the farthest along. So one, two, three, and four, of course, this is the furthest along, so they're currently winning the race, as well as the second, third, and fourth player getting to go up on one of these tracks each, which is pretty good because you're going to be basically uh, getting a little bit of a head start for all the players that aren't going first. You're going to start everybody's points off at 10 over here, and the tracker goes all the way to 50, which is about right for the game. Uh, each of these little spaces here are going to have little shields, and these shields are going to have a ones, twos, and possibly even threes that are going to score you bonus points. But the only way to get to them is by landing directly on them. This little area over here indicates the cards or tech cards you need to get rid of in order to score points, and as you do that, you're going to place these little check marks on them, indicating that you've scored them uh, the first time, second, and third. Of course, scoring it the first time will get, grant you more points, but that's going to disappear. And so the next time you do it, you're going to only score five and then four points. This one's has a pair, three of a kind, three different types, all five different types. Pretty simple, straightforward, and easy to understand, I think. Uh, and that's pretty much the setup. You can put three of these tech cards up. Make sure you shuffle the deck. And each of the, the deck cards are going to actually have a different backing. So you have an idea of what's coming next so that you know about this thing here. Set up this deck here, which is going to have asteroids. There's the first six or so that are going to be red. And then there's the rest of them, which can be either misses or hits. You're going to shuffle those up randomly, and it's three misses per player that you add into the deck here. There are five basic dice. There is one yellow die, and there is one red bonus die. Each player is going to get one of these cards here, and based on the turn order, they're going to get little crystals, and the crystals are going to allow you to do certain things on your turn. For instance, one crystal lets you reroll two dice, two is five dice, three lets you change plus or minus to a die, four is going to let you uh, reorientate the die, and then uh, five over here is going to let you add this bonus die to your roll, which is pretty useful. Uh, another thing is you're going to get uh, to put these little asteroids next to the planets because you'll be utilizing these, putting them down. And uh, then you're pretty much ready to go. Make sure that all the pieces are put correctly put together uh, and you're just going to start. And how you start is you take all the die, including the yellow, and you roll. And much like Yahtzee, when you roll the dice, you're then going to assign them. And you can assign them to the tech cards. So let's go ahead and move these over here. Uh, if you have two ones, you can put them here, or you can simply put one one there and continue rolling. Or four for this one here. So that's basically the cost of these ones here, so if I want to vote those, I can have those. Uh, this one is interesting. It's a yellow. 
And over here on each of these planets here, this one says as many ones as you have, you can put them here, which will let you move up one space for each one. This one's for each pair, will let you move up a space. This is for each three of a kind, four of a kind, five of a kind, and then all the dice of different numbers, which tells you right there, as long as they're not the same. So for instance, I could put a six, three, and a four here, and that would move me three spaces, along with this yellow. This yellow, based on whatever roll it is, is uh, separate from these, and it will let you move up that many spaces. So in this instance, I would move up three spaces in addition to three separate die, which is six spaces on my turn, uh, which is pretty pretty useful. So I could move up to six with this green guy here, just from here. Um, and if I had allocated, maybe if I allocated this four, this four, and this four over here instead, I could have actually moved uh, this guy up one space. So you get the idea of how it's going to be moving across on this board here. But the idea is simple. You're trying to get to the end. If you can get to these planets here, you're going to score them. And on the side of each of these areas here is going to be a score tracker as well. At the beginning of a turn, you're simply going to reveal one of these cards first. And based on the order is where you're going to place an explosion. So in this case, the six is going to take a damage. If the ship six was already destroyed, then one would, which is over here. And then if not, that one's already destroyed as well, two would. Or scored, basically. And then you're going to discard it. So that would be the first thing. Then you're going to roll. You're going to allocate your dice around the board. Uh, and then after you allocate, you're going to move your spaces, and then you're going to take anything that you gathered, like tech cards, and you're going to end in turn, and the next player is going to get a chance to do so. And, of course, you can use your crystals. The last thing you can do with dice al uh, allocation is if you get rid of a die, you can add a crystal to your uh, to your pool, which is going to help you along the way. They're not really powerful, so it's more of like a last resort thing. And the only way you can save die is by placing them on these spaces here. Otherwise, you have to re-roll them up until the point where which you can no longer re-roll them or place them. The only interesting thing that I have not mentioned is when you get on a planet, it is going to score. So in, in this instance, uh, if this player landed here, he would get one of these pieces here. But in this instance, if this play player got to here, then he's going to score 30 points. This player would score 18. This player would score 8. And this player would get negative 2. And then all these guys are going to actually go up here. And these are be going to be done. These score uh, this scores at the same time. And then no one can go here anymore. It's a, it's, it's a locked down planet. The same goes for every other planet. And the game ends when all planets have either been destroyed via these explosions here, which after three, ha after three of them, it gets blown up and everybody just simply scores it or uh, if somebody reaches that space. And that's the basic idea of the game. The one little caveat to it is that when you land on, the only way you get these pieces is not by passing them, by actually landing on them, they go in front of you. And uh, at the end of the of the game, you get a chance to turn in one set of these guys here from your pool. You only get five of them total, so make sure you you know, do your best to gather them uh, to gain the most points possible. Then you're going to use this tracker here, and you'll be using it probably six different times going around the board. A pretty simple game. Like I said, these guys here are your solo player variant cards that you're going to be using, but in any other player game, it plays exactly as explained. All right, so let's come up, and I'll explain it, and I'll talk about it more, uh, my review and whatnot. All right, so two caveats. The first one is uh, the planet dies in three hits. I got that right, but uh, there's six different little planet to little meteor type tokens, and when it takes a second hit, you flip it over to two. When it takes the third hit, you take it off and score the planet. And the planet has been destroyed, so you're going to score where everybody's going to be at that current time, even if they didn't make it to the planet, which of course they didn't because it was, just, it was destroyed beforehand. Planets can't get destroyed after the fact, and you're going to go down the list of the card based on whether the planet was destroyed or whether it's still there or whether it has been taken. Uh, also, when you pick these cards up, these little meteor cards, it'll either be a miss or it'll be one of these things. Then you're going to put it face down after you resolve it so players don't get to see what has been put into the discard pile so that they don't necessarily know what's going to be happening next. It's a small rule, but I wanted to make sure that that was clear. Um, and that's basically the idea of the game. It has Yahtzee, it has a little bit of tableau management as far as the tech cards go, and also it has the ability for you to uh, use these tech cards. When you use a tech card, they don't go away though. They simply turn over to the side, so that way you know you've used them. You can't use, continuously use them, but you can use them for discard purposes to gain the bonus points uh, for turning in sets of tech cards. In this case here, it lets you change one die uh, plus one. They tell you what they do. This will give you a bonus singular die uh, that has a one pip on it, and this one here gives you a reroll of three, I think. They all do... There's, Bunch of different things that they do. I think you get the idea though. Um, Cosmic Run Regeneration is excellent. We really, really enjoyed this game. I, it brings the best of the tableau management to Yahtzee mechanisms uh, put together that I've seen in quite some time. It's very simple and easy to understand as you progressively play. It took us a bit of a second or two to figure out how the spaces worked, but once we actually figured out the basic symbology, we were able to understand exactly what each of the spaces did and what they all required, which is very nice. 
Oh, there's a one on that planet? That means that planet needs ones. Oh, there's a, a, a die space equals die space? Okay, that's pairs. Die space equals die space equals die space. That's three of a kind. Very, very simple. Uh, and then, of course, the tech cards. They literally tell you what you need on them. And then you have your little uh, flavor token card or your little uh, player reference that tells you what your crystals can do for you and how you can utilize them. You can score points with them or you can save them. Uh, you can score points with them in the other game or you can use them to manipulate the dice during your turn. You never want to have dead dice on your turn. The yellow is always going to help you progressively go through the longest planet and the red die is a nice bonus if you are behind and you have a lot of crystals. Uh, the game is well done as far as the artwork. I really enjoyed that. Uh, the pieces and components are all nice. This is definitely a game that I would put up in a, a on a shelf to look pretty and it's a nice uh, four player game would I play with two players probably not I'd probably prefer this game at three and four players it does have a single player variant but I'm very very picky with single player games and I probably wouldn't want to play this one single player either um, although there is one I'm thinking I'm gonna be showing you guys at some point and uh, the planets being destroyed is cool it puts the game on a timer and it's always gonna be random as to how you want to collect certain things and whether you want to go for that Yahtzee or not and of course the harder the die rolls are the more points you can gather but you can manipulate the dice to make sure that you get those certain things which is also pretty cool and when we scored this game the first second and third time I believe we were all very very close there's one time maybe one person was pretty far off but in general it's a very close scoring game it only goes up to about 50 points but if you go up past it you can go all the way around again and keep going works just like any other game I suppose like Ticket to Ride um, so overall I really enjoy this game it's really fun and I've played multiple times it's one of those games I'm definitely keeping in my collection and uh, if you are interested in it I definitely suggest checking it out uh, as far as negative things go for you certain players if you don't like Dotsie roll mechanics if you don't like the randomness of the way the planets are going to be destroyed or if you don't like trying to collect tableau in a Yahtzee game or you don't like Yahtzee in a tableau game probably not something for you but for all of those who find it a little bit interesting i definitely suggest checking out cosmic run regeneration by dr finn games yet another ballpark hit in my opinion great game description below if you're interested